Hello. Good afternoon, Mike. Hello. Do, um, do you feel there was a, a marked improvement in your run defense yesterday? And if so, what were the, the major factors in, in your mind as far as that uh, being able to turn that around some? Um, well, I thought we did play the run well yesterday. Um, you know, it kind of it actually forced them to go into a, a different type of an offense, one that they'd actually used the week before against the Ravens. But anyhow, I thought that we did a good job, made some progress. Uh, as I've said all along, we've had spurts of, of good run defense, but uh, from a consistent standpoint, there's only been a game or two where we've done a consistent good job or done the job well anyhow. Um, and why that was, uh, I would say it's just the continuation of the work that we're doing. That's all. We continue to stay on on target. Uh, the guys are working extremely hard. I think our finish is always improving. Um, and uh, just the understanding of how to play the run. You know, it's, it's, it's never just one guy. It takes a collective group of players to, to stop the run, and that's why it's the ultimate team sport. You know, I think teams that stop the run know that better than anyone. And uh, what, your, your rookie Gallimore has started to get some more time and, and appeared to play more yesterday than, than he has. Uh, how did he grade out yesterday, and, and what improvement has he shown you since he's gotten some opportunities in there? Uh, Neville played well yesterday. That was the best he's played to date. Um, you know, everyone makes mistakes, and so did Neville yesterday. He had his share, but nonetheless, he's, he's gotten him better. He's gotten better. He's improved each week. He continues to work extremely hard in practice. Um, his practices are uh, getting better all the time. Oh, yeah. Which is reflected in his game, and uh, so I think, like I said, I think it's just the hard work that, that Neville's putting in into it that's, that's paying off for him. And he just has to stay, which I know he will stay on target with what he's doing. But he's he's doing it, you know. Like I said, he's he's working extremely hard at it, and it's showing. Uh, Mike, with the with the penalties, do you look at them as technique issues, um, uh, overzealous officiating? I, you know. I, how do you look at what some of the things that were called yesterday on your on your guys? Well, as you all know, that's just going to get me in trouble to comment on officiating. Um, so I, I won't comment just on officiating. But the part that we can control are the uh, are really the non-combative type of penalties, the ones that are, you know, jumping off sides and things like that. Those are the frustrating ones. You know, when guys you teach guys to play aggressive, and when they do, things happen time from time to time. Certainly, you know. Not all calls are calls that we agree with. I think every coaching staff would say that from time to time. But, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate. Um, sometimes you have to be luckier than you have to be good. Um, but nonetheless, those things occur. You know, there's been times where those have gone in our favor as well. And when they do, you know, you, you don't complain about them then. So there's not much you can do about it when it's after the fact. And what have you learned about Randy here in the last couple of weeks that maybe you didn't know about him? You know, Randy, much like the rest of the guys, it's uh, it's interesting when you're new to to a group of of young men that uh, how how valuable an off season and training camp are to really get to know them because you, you know we're halfway through the season, as you all well know, and and uh, we're I kind of have those feelings sometimes that you get about the time the season begins when you when you start to kind of know someone a little better, and Randy's. I think a good example of that. Now he came to us very late anyway, but uh, you know he's very, he's a very talented individual. Um, but the more he gets reps in practice and gets familiar with the things that we're doing, he just begins to play faster and faster. And I thought, uh, really, not just yesterday, but a week ago, he had some plays where he just, you know, you can tell when he really is sure of, of the communication and the and and what's you know what his job responsibility is. He he can really play fast and make a difference. Mike, how do you keep the faith when things are going as poorly as they're going as, as deep as five to week five to six weeks into the season? And, and how do you try to get the players to keep the faith? Um, you're talking about uh, just overall from a defensive standpoint or a win-loss or both? Yeah, defensive standpoint, just the numbers and obviously the losses too. But, you know, you're having a hard time stopping people and you're still trying to get this message across. Well, uh, you know, along the way, you're always looking for just signs of improvement. And uh, naturally, you know, along the way, there were signs of improvement, but there are also signs of setbacks. And uh, those are the ones you have to fight through more than anything else. Um, these last couple of weeks, we probably played as good as, you know, we played, we've played 
pretty pretty well for the most part. And so that just, I think what keeps people going is just the, when you're making progress, um, whether it's just on a, a now and then, you know, if it's not every snap, but you're, you're still making progress, I think guys start to believe and start to trust and start to see the, the fruits of their labor, so to speak. Um, and these last two weeks, I think, have been great examples of, of those early weeks that they went through of the ups and downs of, you know, of some of that paying off. Um, like I said, we've had two good weeks. As Mike always says, you know, you got to start stacking those good weeks. You can't just, you know, have a good week and then a bad week. You have to stack them. And, you know, so hopefully with the buy and then coming back, hopefully we stack another one. So, but I don't think it's, uh, look, it's always a challenge, um, you know, when things aren't going well, whether it's because you're winning or losing, should I say it's because it's you're losing or because you're not playing well. Um, you know, you just have to stay the course. And as long as you feel and believe in the things you're doing are the right things, it'll, it'll turn for you. You just have to stay with it. Do you ever see or hear any of the criticism from the pundits? And does that ever bother you? Um, you know, it's, it's disappointing sometimes, but not so much, you know, the, the older, obviously I've been in this a long time and I've had really good days and I've had some bad days, no different than the ones, you know, we've had this season. Um, so as you get older, you get a little more mature to it, I believe. Um, and then the other side of that is, is that, you know, when you're, when you're getting ready for an opponent, a new opponent each week, you really don't listen to a whole lot on the outside. You don't have time to listen. So I think if, if that was, if someone, I do believe that, uh, having some, some peers and things that I know when they, they'll listen to different things, they get pretty disappointed. But like I said, you keep your, just keep going to the next week and, and try to improve. You don't, you don't hear much of it, but uh, like, you know, it said when you're not doing well, you don't need someone to tell you you're not doing well. Believe me, I can tell you, I can tell you sooner than you could tell me, but uh, that's just part of it. You know, you take the good with the bad and, and the, the highs are really high. And sometimes the lows, you just got to make sure they don't take you down. Uh, Mike, there's been a lot of criticism on your two inside linebackers, Jalen Smith and Lathan Vanderish. How have they played in your eyes when you, when you see them? Obviously, no one's perfect, but how do you think they've done this year? You said they're taking criticism? What would you say? Yeah, they've been taking criticism by yeah. fans, media, but how, how do you think they've played? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I, I on, on just on the season, if I just said the season, I think they've played a, a, a do-your-job to a – a, a little better at times, uh, or I shouldn't say a little better. I've done a lot better at times. I mean, I, they obviously Leighton missed a lot of games. I think that was the third game he played in this season for us because the first game he didn't play, but a, a handful of snaps. Um, whereas Jalen has played, you know, in every game. And I think that Jalen's had some very good games. He's had some games. I'm sure he'd like some plays back, but uh, I would say he's played played well for the most part. Um, he's, he's, he plays with tremendous passion and effort. I ne would never uh, say that he is uh, – you know, was not an effort player in any game we've had. Uh, win, lose, or draw, he can he, he comes to play and he does a good job. Um, I think any team in the league would be lucky to have either one of those guys. Looks like Lawrence had some knee issues early on. It seems as if he, he's shaking them off. How has he played the last uh, two or three weeks for you? Um, I don't know if there's anyone that has a better motor and plays with more passion than, than D-Law. I mean, he really – he gives it his all all the time. So – um, and to be honest with you, sometimes I watch him in practice and I don't see the, you know, I, I know that he was, got banged up and I know he's actually playing with some bumps and bruises as a lot of guys do, but his, his, I thought early on were, were a little more severe and whatever they were, I just know that he's, you know, he gives it his all all the time and, uh, he's obviously a very good player. So I'm just, I'm glad that he's, you know, I'm glad that he's here and I'm glad he's still playing. I was watching back that final touchdown, the one to the uh, on tight end, and I was trying to get a feel for how he was so open in the flat. Is Jalen supposed to follow him there? Is that the corner's responsibility? W what happened? Um, you know, I'd rather not get into who's whose fault. And just start pointing, but look, there's every defense has a, um, you know, it's all planned out. I don't, it, it was, it was just poor play on the defensive part. I'll leave it at that. I respect that. Um, over the past two weeks, as the run defense has improved, Antoine Woods has seen a lot more playing time there. Is that coincidental, or, or do you view him as being a real part to that improvement? I think he's been an integral part to that to that improvement. I really do, and I don't think that's an understatement. He's done a, really a hell of a job. He's uh, um, the thing that I'm kind of find, that I think we're all finding out about to Antoine Woods is he's got he's got some leadership ability that's uh, 
that's uh, that's noticeable. Mike, you talked about Antoine, and and earlier you talked about Neville and uh, um, and Randy Gregory as well. How much do, how much is it just you know their own improvement, and how much of it how much of their success is just you know the opportunity that they're getting with you know uh, recent moves with Dontari Poe and and you know Everson Griffin and things like that. Well, they're getting the opportunity because of what they're doing in practice and what they've shown, and uh, so it's kind of a two way street. The opportunities also have presented themselves for different reasons, whether someone got hurt in front of them or someone, you know, was no longer with the football team. But they've, uh, like I said, they wouldn't be getting the opportunity had they not been working hard and earning it. But when they've gotten the opportunity to be on the field, they've continued to improve each week uh, in practice and in the games. So hopefully that continues and, and their, you know, their play obviously will just uh, increase. And they've, you know, both of them, have, both of them the other day, I think got a good many snaps. And with Gallimore, is his trajectory? Are you surprised with how with how far along he is? Did you expect him to kind of be here when uh, right. when you guys drafted him at this point in his career in the season, or is he ahead of it? Or, or how, how, how are you kind of doing it? Um, I would say, uh, you know, look at when you draft somebody, you're always hopeful that they're more game ready, but they're coming out of college, and and so often, um, you know, you'll find that they're not as far along as you wished for, unless they were really a high pick. Um, and, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you are looking for them to, to you know, uh, what I want to say, you're looking for them to participate and to, to play in, in games, you know, as soon as you can. And that's, look, they're, they're getting their time now for, like we just said, for, for different reasons. But, uh, um, you know, like I said, you're always hopeful that they play sooner and, uh, and look at these; those guys have, are doing a very good job, and so we're excited about them. Um, and I will say, you know, Neville, for example, played as, as good as he's played all year the other day in the game. Um, he continues to, like I already mentioned earlier, he continues to work extremely hard, um, and it showed in the game. And as we watched the film together, which we do, we did today as a defense, you know, there were several plays that were pointed out about, you know, about how his play has stepped up. And to be honest with you, in fairness to him, there's been some plays – you know, in the earlier parts of the season when he got in where he wasn't doing so well. I'm sure, you know, he, he wished he had done better in front of the group, so to speak. But there was no question today that he was praised on some plays. And, and I think it made him, you know, feel good. And I think he'll build on those successes. So, um, you know, he's, he's doing a good job. And hopefully just he will continue just to get better with each week. Hey, Mike, uh, you know, Xavier Woods has obviously been one of your, your primary safeties all season, but yesterday it seemed like y'all rotated the other three, uh, Donovan, Darian, and Stephen Parker pretty pretty frequently. Uh, I'm just curious if you can shed some light. Is that is that situational? Are, are you moving those guys around based on certain personnel groupings? What's kind of the the method to that, I guess? Yeah. Now you now I'm I'm not sure I caught you when you said X, Xavier's been playing throughout the right. You're saying that because it was the yeah, other three. Yes. The other three were rotating. Okay. Is that right. what you said? Yes. Well, the rotation yesterday was brought on as much by game plan as anything. Uh, they have several different personnel groupings. Uh, you may have noticed. You know, Layton came out on some personnel groupings, and a defensive back took his place. Uh, they go with some five wide, four and five wide receiver sets at times. The uh, uh, Pittsburgh did so. Rather than get you know a linebacker matched up on a on a wide receiver in a man situation, which is not what you want to do, um, that was the cause for it. So they kind of were on the same rotation, you could say, as a normal game. But the fact that the opponent was using some some uh, personnel groupings dictated us to you know have a few more personnel groupings than we normally would have. Now we'll finish this out with Michael Gelkin. Mike, you guys lose your Wednesday practice as you go into protocols uh, for COVID. What what do you lose with that bye week practice? What was kind of the uh, I'm sorry, script? Sorry, you, you said we lost the Wednesday. Say that again when you started. Yeah, you, yeah. You guys lost your Wednesday practice this week coming uh, because of COVID protocols. Gotcha. What, what what do you guys lose with that Wednesday practice? What were you hoping to call, accomplish in terms of what was scripted in that bye week period? You know, we hadn't really scripted anything to date. Uh, I know Mike uh, probably had a plan, and he was, I mean, matter of fact, Mike did have a plan. He was going to go over it, but I think when this all came about, he, uh, you know, obviously had to had to make a change on the move. Um, so there was, there was uh, 
I know that he had said to, to uh, you know, to myself and Kellen as well, both that he, you know, wanted to get together on it. But then as soon as this, this thing came about the COVID deal, it, it changed, he had to change gears. Uh, 